Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today, we're going to talk about a question from Eric Peak, KO4SCR. He has a very interesting question, and I think it deserves a, a look at this because uh, lots of people are going to encounter this very same problem. Uh, it says, Dave, when a vertical with radials, uh, is there a high voltage or risk of shock to people or pets from the radials? If you bury them an inch or so in the ground, is there still a risk? Using a half-fed dipole, where do you ground the antenna? There's those two separate questions. Let's take a look at the first one. Okay, first I'm going to spread this out a little bit so that we're looking at the entire whiteboard. Okay, we have a vertical with lots of radials. 16 to 30. Uh, after a while, putting in more radials just uh, sort of diminishes the, the added value. After a while, you don't need any more. And they can be about 25 feet long. Uh, they don't need to be much longer. Now, here is what I suggest. Insulated. For example, 14 gauge uh, stranded with THHN insulation. In other words, common house wire. Okay. Now, the common house wire allows you to um, leave them out on the ground. If, if, they, if they make electrical contact with the ground, you start turning this into a grounding system rather than a radial system. The purpose of a radial system is you've got this thing up here generating uh, waves, you know, from the, the vertical, and they bounce off the radial field, okay, and that causes a wave out about like this, which is fairly low uh, in angle. If you uh, bury uninsulated wire, it very quickly becomes part of the grounding system, and you are, in effect, you have a, a vertical with the ground, which will radiate, but not as effectively. Now, if you are going to bury the stranded wire, you want to go uh, no more than two inches. What is two inches? It's 50 centimeters. Okay, no more than 50 centimeters um, and two inches. Um, the reason for this is because you've got grass and other stuff like that up there, and you can still radiate past that uh, which will make it work fine. If it is uh, greater than two inches, I'm sorry, get my symbols wrong here, less than two inches, okay, less than two inches. If you go deeper than that, then the radials start becoming part of the ground. Okay, so, and I'd say 25 feet-ish. Okay, you can buy a roll of wire 500 feet roll of wire. It's a single wire, not a cable. Single wire, uh, 14 gauge stranded THHN for $100 at uh, Home Depot, give or take, because the price of copper is going like this all the time. Um, and about $100. And that's a good addition. If you just paid, you know, $700 for an antenna, why not pay $100 and put in a really good radial system? Okay, stranded. And then at the ends, if you're going to leave them out on the open, I would suggest, now I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm only making this as a suggestion because I myself don't do it. Um, so a little bit of uh, <laughs> rank hypocrisy here. A uh, best practice would have you putting a wire nut on the end of uh, each of them. Uh, so that uh, a wire nut is a piece of plastic that screws onto the end of a wire and insulates it. Uh, there are lots of other uses for wire nuts. And that way, 
animals and so on won't come around. Now, the only time those things will have a high voltage end will be when you are transmitting power. Um, so if you're transmitting just for the, um, transmitting just, why did that go up there? That is very strange. Um, if you're transmitting power, for example, um, FT8. Transmitting FT8, you're putting out a steady amount of power for the 13 seconds or so that it's transmitting. And if one of your children or a pet or somebody touches the end of that, they can get a little bit of a shock. Uh, what's called an RF burn. Uh, they can be, well, they're, they're burns. They can be painful. So you put that wire nut on the end, you won't have the problem. We don't have children around here. There's no children in the tract, as a matter of fact. Um, now, um, if you're burying them, do you need to put that on there? No, not really, uh, because it's underground where it's inaccessible. And it's, now remember, if you have 30 radials and you're broadcasting, broadcasting, transmitting 90 watts, that is only 3 watts per radial, okay? And that's why radials can be quite thin and so on, uh, because the uh, sum total of the currents going out to the radials will equal the current going up to the upper part of the antenna. And now what some people do, and my um, step by R big IR antenna is this way. There's a ground rod there too. That takes care of ground. That keeps the whole thing nice and steady, transmits very nicely, and so on. So let's take a look at your uh, other question here. That's the question having to do with the radials. You can tell when I get near the end of a, a discussion when the board is absolutely full of... full of comments. Okay, on this one, half-wave dipole okay and it's cut in the center and you've got your coax here the center comes up to here and this comes to the outside of the coax this comes down to the lightning arrestor where the outside the coax is grounded the inner wire is not now how do you deal with the static which is the biggest risk and the lightning risk here, and that's called a lightning arrestor, which touches both ground and has a small tube in here with a special gas in it and a couple little points like this. And if the voltage exceeds a certain value, this will arc across. Now for static, it only arcs across um, for a very small period of time because it doesn't take much time to pull off the static. By the way, these lightning points when open can handle uh, hundreds of volts, but when they zap, when they go zap, uh, you're 20 to 30 volts max across that zap. So it basically brings the antenna down to ground level and then you should be okay. So that's where you ground them. Uh, you don't need to ground it right under the antenna. You can run the coax across the ground. But you do need this ground system where your uh, coax enters the house. You should bring all your wires to one area, ground them all, take them into the house as a bunch. You should also have on the back of your uh, shack table some sort of a grounding rod, a piece of copper pipe or something. And so you ground this to that and you ground some other box to that also. And then there is a single wire from here to here. It's often a piece of strap uh, or braid or something like that that has excellent RF uh, uh, carrying potential. So Eric, that uh, I believe answers your question and good luck to you. I'd like to talk about uh, something that uh, is um, new to the channel. I want to introduce a new feature to this channel 
My study is filled with books and gadgets I've accumulated from having this channel, and it's time to thin the herd, so to speak. I'm announcing my first giveaway to hams. Now, I'm doing this for hams in the USA because of keep the shipping reasonable. Shipping packages overseas can get very expensive. Um, the item to be given away this time is a book called Novel Antennas from the Radio Society of Great Britain. I think I picked it up at Dayton. Here's how the giveaway works. It's totally free to you. Totally free to you, except for stamp. Send a postcard, QSL card, or simple one-page letter by snail mail to P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. On whatever you send, make sure to include the giveaway number, because I'm going to have a different giveaway every two or three weeks. Okay, in this case, it's number one. Put your number one, then put your name and call sign and your shipping address. Please include your phone number in case I have questions. Please nothing else. Though if you want to send a picture of you and your station, I may be able to show these during the live stream. Electronic submissions will not be accepted. Please do not send a, a, a JPEG and then say print this and put it in the pile. Uh-uh, no. <laughs> that puts too much work on me. Uh, you mail it to me. Um, the drawing will take place for, for giveaway number one on the Thursday evening U.S. time, August 26th, live stream. Note that I pay the book shipping, so it's all totally free to you. I hope to do something like this every month. Note that after the drawing, all entries will be discarded. Okay? And no information will be kept or transcribed. No mailing list, no nothing like that. It, it just goes, literally goes in the trash. Um, if it becomes a problem of some kind, I'll, I'll have them shredded. Okay, so there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you may do so by going to decastlercom support and picking a way that you find you like the most. Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like. Don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 73.